The college sports shuffle is a con, and the athletes always lose. It's not even a huge story anymore, big-time college program switch conferences nowadays the way most of us change our socks. It happened so much in the past week that it became hard to keep track of who was on the move and where they were moving. Let's recap, Oregon and Washington are abandoning the Pac-12, 10, 9, 6, 4, to join the Big Ten. Once that conference recruits two more teams, which it will no doubt do in the not-too-distant future, it can call itself the Big Ten twice, which will at least be accurate. Meanwhile, Colorado and football coach Deion Sanders also left the pack to move to the Big 12, and were followed soon after by Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, meaning the Big 12, which has had 10 teams recently, now has 16 teams, since it lost Texas and Oklahoma but is bringing in Brigham Young, UCF, Houston and Cincinnati to replace them. Colorado and Utah were part of the pack for about 15 minutes, but the departure of the six schools left the conference with just four members, Stanford, California, Washington State, and Oregon State. USC and UCLA announced a year earlier that they were leaving for the Big Ten. Most of these moves will actually take place a year from now. But there is, undoubtedly, more to come. If it is to stay alive, the pack will have to go on a desperate rating and pillaging tour of its own. It could target schools such as San Diego State in the Mountain West, which was close to joining the league earlier this summer, along with other Mountain West schools such as Boise State, Fresno State, and Air Force. The league might also go after schools from the newly restructured American Athletic Conference such as SMU, Tulane and Rice. Or, it might just fold, after being in business in some form since 1915, and let its remaining members grab financial life rafts wherever they can find them. Stanford and California are already flirting with the ACC, but who knows what will happen to that conference if Florida State leaves, entirely possible, and Clemson follows. That would leave the ACC with a bunch of mediocre football schools, courtesy of former Commissioner John Swafford, who thought rating the Big East for Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Boston College, Virginia Tech and Miami would somehow change the culture of the ACC. It did exactly that, transforming the most iconic basketball conference in history into just another league, while creating a bloated football conference that loves to brag about how many of its teams reach second-tier bowls every year. Swafford also made a remarkably one-sided deal with Notre Dame, giving the school full privileges in every sport except the one that mattered, football. The Irish play five conference games a year, meaning they play Clemson and Florida State once every three years, and don't have to play in the conference championship game when they're good. To quote then men's basketball coach Mike Bray at the time of the deal, I'm not sure why Swafford would make that deal unless we agree to bring the gold helmets full time. Now, Jim Phillips, Swafford's successor, may have to fight for the ACC's survival. The funniest, and most annoying, thing about all the announcements from school presidents, athletic directors and conferences were the constant references to student-athletes. Let's put aside my argument that the term is the single most hypocritical, not to mention redundant, phrase in all of sports. My question is this, who do these guys think they're fooling at this point? No one, no one, thinks any of these moves are about anything but money. There's nothing wrong with following the money in today's world, but let's not turn this into a stand-up act by claiming it's for the student-athletes. The Pac-12 fell apart last week when the best TV deal commissioner George Klyovkov could come up with was with Apple Sports. The money wasn't awful, about $25 million a year per school, with escalators based on subscriptions, according to the AP, but the lack of exposure was a huge hindrance. There was no guarantee in the deal to get the Pac-12 games onto more traditional networks, and the conference, already hurting and recruiting in recent years, would undoubtedly lose much needed exposure. Jerry Brewer, realignment bulldozed the Pac-12. All that's left is sadness and pain. When Klyovkov presented the potential deal to the conference membership, the schools began scrambling like the proverbial rats deserting a fast sinking ship. All in the name of their student athletes, of course. The college football season begins in two weeks, with the NCAA's euphemistic week zero a way to try to hide just how long the season has become. By then, it is entirely possible there will be more change. No one knows exactly how the four remaining pack teams will react recruit or run? There's no doubt that the SEC, which has been quiet since Texas and Oklahoma agreed to join the league two years ago, is going to jump back into the realignment pool at some point soon. Florida State and Clemson, as football powers, would make sense, although Florida would certainly balk at FSU joining the league and sharing in its TV package. Those two schools will probably make a move for the door, because the ACC television money isn't close to that enjoyed by the SEC or the Big Ten. For better or worse, 
mostly worse, the ACC is locked into its contract with ESPN through 2036. The better is that the deal can't get worse, the worse is that it can't get better. As someone old enough to remember when the Southwest Conference champion hosted the Cotton Bowl every year and Indiana represented the Big Ten in the Rose Bowl, punt, John, punt, I've reached the point in which it really doesn't matter who plays in what conference. The presidents are going to chase the money until it runs out, which will probably be never. What happens to the non-revenue student-athletes who do not travel by charter is a question that will have to be answered later. Don't expect to see Maryland and UCLA playing soccer or Rutgers and USC playing volleyball on a regular basis. How about a Penn State-Oregon dual meet in swimming? Ever try to get from State College to Eugene on a commercial flight in January? The money justifies anything and everything. I see one ray of hope. The Ivy League will never change. John Feinstein